Broadway, you're having that nightmare again. Paul Blart Mall Cop isn't becoming a musical. No, 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 no. That's not what this is about. I wanted to wish you a happy Independence Day. Alright, I mean, I'm not American and it's 10 p.m., but... Two centuries ago, my ancestors fought your ancestors for the right to be independent and party as much as we wanted. I mean, it kind of sucks not being able to live in the same commonwealth as my best friend, but to be honest, being an American makes up for that. So, I was thinking maybe we could livestream Captain America 2 later, talk about freedom. I mean, I have an underrated rock musical to review first. Oh, Broadway, you know what? I can't. I have to go on a tour of Hogwarts, the Hogwarts castle that they use in the movies. My cousin, uh, Reginald III just died. And I might inherit the castle, so... Oh my god, that's so great! Okay, so you obviously have much more important British stuff to attend to, so let me know how that goes, okay? Bye! Alright everybody, who's ready for some serious liberty? I'm the Broadway Neophyte, and this is Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson. Our seventh president is best known for his populist views, Indian Removal Act, and dislike of the National Bank. But the show characterizes him as a hilariously whiny emo rock star. In particular. Look at him go. He's like the guy from We Will Rock You if that show had actually been self-aware about how pretentious its characters were. Jackson gets orphaned at age 13 when his family is killed by Native Americans. The real president's family died from a mix of cholera, accidents, and the Revolutionary War, but I assume it was changed to give him a more sympathetic motivation to hate Native Americans. He also gets briefly captured by the British during the Revolution, which did really happen, and later in life becomes a war hero taking land from the British, French, Spanish, and Native Americans. Could we discuss this rationally? No! <laughs> he decides to run for president and wins lots of support as a representative of the common people, but faces opposition from the rich, often corrupt Washington politicians. Also, please look at this amazing sign. This show has lots of roles for the supporting cast. Multiple songs are sung by people who aren't even named characters, and some get monologues explaining the public's changing attitudes towards Jackson. He bowed to us, not to the people. And it was at that moment that all the problems I had with him just began to melt away. Jackson's wife Rachel feels ignored by her husband as he campaigns, and to make matters worse, the public finds out they got married before she divorced her first husband. Ruining her reputation. She ends up dying of grief just as Jackson wins the election. Jackson tries to be the people's president, but his own prejudices quickly get in the way. He appoints Cherokee Chief Black Fox as Deputy of Indian Affairs, but refuses to listen to his ideas and plans to forcibly move Native Americans off their land anyway. Also, it turns out that many Americans are apathetic about politics, or don't know what they want, and look to Jackson to tell them what to think. What do you think you do about the Indians? Me? Yeah, you, Naomi. Um, well, I thought they should move, but now maybe we should have them stay. You see, those ideas contradict each other. <laughs> okay, well then move them. Uh... As violence escalates between settlers and Native Americans, Jackson realizes he may have to make some difficult decisions alone. He and Black Fox discuss a treaty to peacefully separate their people, and Jackson confesses that 19th century Americans may be selfish and short-sighted with their colonization, but he has to think of his own citizens first. Finally deciding that presidents don't have the luxury of friendship, he betrays Black Fox by sending troops to destroy the Native American tribes. We close out with the narrator showing up to tell Jackson that in the future he is considered a genocidal murderer. Some believe he was the greatest president of the 19th century, while others believe his tenure was forever tarnished by his forced relocation of countless tribes and the subsequent trail of tears which 
resulted in the deaths of many thousands of Native Americans. Great, great, good to hear. You know, you're not supposed to know your legacy before you die. Even so, he goes to his grave defending his original goals of making everyone equal. Honestly, the soundtrack to this show is freaking stellar. This is one of only a few musicals where I can listen to the entire thing without skipping any songs. Most are short and catchy, with folk and punk influences, and use bits of previous songs as background counterpoint. One song that makes especially good use of this is Public Life, which builds from Jackson's despair over his wife's death into a crowd song about his determination to devote his life to the presidency. It's time to be that guy. I'm gonna take this country back. Second Nature, a quiet, melancholy song about early Americans trampling over others with their manifest destiny mindset. The rivers run, and parking lots, the endless, endless fields and cities. We make them replace them with all our dreams of the future. And what was it for? The swimming pools, the highways, the ball games in the dust. stands out by being much more gentle and understated than earlier ones, corresponding with the gradual winding down of Jackson's idealism. Admittedly, bloody bloody Andrew Jackson is not perfect. There's this super weird out of nowhere sequence of Jackson dramatically slitting his wrists to a share song. There's his adopted Native American son, Linkoya, who pretty much just hangs around for Jackson's sympathy points. Though there is a good moment when Black Fox gives him his feather and shame after signing away his people's land. But for the most part, the show has an original concept, memorable soundtrack, and infectious time period blending energy. I'm the Broadway Neophyte and I'm gonna go eat a ton of food and blow things up. USA! USA! Populism, yeah!